know how you, as a woman, feel about overpopulation in the world and its relation to polluting the environment. Uh, I, 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 how does Yoko feel about overpopulation? As a woman, I believe. Well, I think the problem is not overpopulation as people believe to be, but it's more of the balance of things. What, you know, like food, some part of the world is wasted of food, and in some parts, you know, nobody has food. And that kind of a balance, if that is solved, I don't think we would be worried so much about overpopulation. I think it's a bit of a joke the way uh, people have uh, made this overpopulation thing into a kind of myth. I don't really believe it, you know. I think whatever happens will balance itself out and work itself out. It's all right for us all living saying, oh, well, there's enough of us, so we won't have any more. Don't let anybody else live. I don't believe in that. I think we've got enough food and money to feed everybody. And I think the natural balance, even though old people will last longer, I'm sure there's quick. enough room for us, and some of them can go to the moon anyway. You, you mean you think there's enough if it were Yeah, I don't believe overpopulation, you know. I, I think that's just a kind of myth that oh. uh, the government has thrown out to keep your mind off Vietnam and Ireland and all the important subjects. Oh, I think you're wrong about that. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is August 22nd, 2012. I'm Darko. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. We're going to cover eugenics in this first video for today. 40% uh, of U.S. food goes to waste. It says average family of four tosses $2,300 worth per year, says NRDC study. So this is something that we've seen in the news, and this is, of course, good old hardcore propaganda to make the slaves feel bad. Um... For basically eating and stuff like that and given the illusion that there's too many people and there's not enough food and, and the food that we have we're wasting it well I'm gonna to try to smash that argument in this video it says here the LA Times takes note of study on American food from Natural Resources Defense Council it says here about 40 percent of the food in the US uh, supply chain goes uneaten it says here a family of four tosses almost three grand worth of I'm sorry 2200 worth of food each year which translates into 20 pounds per person each month Americans waste 50 percent more food today than in the 1970s and 10 times as much as people in Southeast Asia which is kind of ironic because back in the 70s people were at least making more money um, prices were lower um, also people were thinner right now people are all obese. They're, uh, you know, they're these big blobs, these genetically modified slaves. So you can see uh, what the agenda is here is to turn people into these blobs, right? And, um, and a lot of them are barely getting by. So how does that happen? Well, they're poisoning the food supply to kill you off. And then they're going to tell you with this crap, this kind of climate change, green, global warming bullshit about um, how about Americans are wasting food when the government itself uh, and the corporations that exist because of the government are the ones responsible for actually uh, all of this waste. Supermarket produce aisles are bountiful at a cost. Some 15 billion in fruits and vegetables go unsold each year. That's right. It says uneaten food is the single biggest component of municipal solid waste in landfills. And, um, and you know, as far as it going into landfills to make you think, you know, oh, municipal, oh, just regular people, right? Well, no. Just in my own experience, I've seen so much waste in supermarket chains, you know, uh, all the dairy products that get thrown out, uh, meat products, uh, produce, that all that stuff just gets chucked. It gets chucked in these little, these little dumpsters. Uh, and there are people that do dumpster diving. Uh, but basically, also, working at a gas station in the Midwest, they call it, it's called Casey's, you know, they have those little um, displays or, you know, those little heaters uh, that have food and stuff like that inside there, keeping it warm, and they have a little light on there, and it spins around. Well, they throw all that out, and that was so hard for me to do when I worked there for the period of time that I did. At the end of the night, I'd be back there in the dark, sneaking, eating food, because to me, it was just a complete waste. You know, I was skinning, I was just like... Yeah, I was uh, getting paid, but it, I was pretty thin back then. I could use the food, and I'm sitting here throwing it out. And I'm like, I asked them, I'm like, why did they do this? Why don't they just give it to the, to the locals or something like that? And they go, oh, well, then they would just come at the end of the night, and they wouldn't pay for it. And it's liability reasons, and that's the reason for it. It's all about liability, limited liability uh, for corporations. So they're talking about 40% of the food supply is wasted. Well, let's see. Drought crop damage worsens ethanol waiver urge. 
so it goes on and it says that um, it says here that uh, escalating a food versus fuel debate centered on a law that dictates that about 40% of the corn crop must be converted into ethanol. Oof, that number, 40%, is wasted. Well, it is wasted because we waste all the uh, resources on corn, which really doesn't have much nutritional value. And it's everywhere. And again, things like uh, sugar and that. Why is it? Why is everything high fructose corn syrup? Well, it's a depopulation agenda. But in order to do that, they have to use the government to use regulations and stuff like that to make the price of sugar and, and the price of, of, of processing or growing it uh, more expensive. So then they result like GMO, they go to GMO, they go to a high fructose corn syrup. So that, you know, they're using all this, uh, they're using, uh, you know, our food, right, to uh, basically use for fuel to, you know, reduce fuel prices while we sit on also very large reserves of oil right here in the United States. So when a bad drought eventually happens due to, quote, natural disasters or weather modification in HARP, like what's going on in Russia and here, then uh, all of a sudden you have um, a real bad situation as far as food and its supply. While Michigan pantries are bare, farmers forced to dump bumper crops Anyone with a half a brain already knows that the USDA's farm subsidies program is beyond bork. It says to protect farmers when there is a bumper or surplus crop from the market collapsing on that food stuff, they are paid to destroy their crops to protect the price value of that commodity. That's right. I've mentioned this before about the farmers. They're millionaires, a lot of them. And uh, they got a nice cushy uh, operation going with the government and subsidies and that, especially with the recent drought. It says here, Michigan farmers aren't taking this practice too well. Uh, when all of their neighbors have empty pantries. They're talking about these cherry growers in northwest Michigan who produce a bumper crop this summer will leave millions of pounds of cherries on the ground to rot. A federal marketing order will divert 42% of the estimated 300 million plus pound tart cherry harvest from going to the primary domestic market this year. Why not allow these farmers to donate their subsidized crops to local community pantries or other nonprofit charitable organizations that feed the hungry? One in five Americans cannot afford to buy food, says a poll. That's right. They're experiencing difficulty in affording food for themselves or their families, a sign which proves that the country's economy is not on the road to recovery. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the marijuana conspiracy, the real reason why hemp is illegal. Hemp has approximately 25,000 uses from food, paint, and fuel to clothing and construction materials hemp is used. says there's even uh, fibers in these uh, Lipton tea bags. Uh, so, Every 3.6 seconds, someone in the world dies of hunger. Hemp seeds are the most nutritious and economical solution to end world hunger. With an 80% concentration of good fats, our bodies need for good health, maintenance, and protein. It says here that hemp truly is a perfect balance for food source. And uh, this is an argument that I've made before, uh, just for people that I know, which probably doesn't mean much, but either way, it's just like with hemp, with all these plastic bags, you know, plastic bags that hold food, and plastic containers, you know, like sour cream, yogurt, all that crap. All the plastics that is wasted, all that petroleum, right? And it's just like, oh, oil is so expensive. Well, it's like, well, why don't you fucking start growing hemp so you don't have to import it from Canada? And um, and then all of a sudden, all these, uh, these, quote, plastics that we have to feel guilty about using, it's, it's totally renewable. It's totally recyclable because it'll be made out of hemp. But, you know, that makes too much sense. And the system that we're living in isn't supposed to make sense to the average person. Kansas jury refuses to recognize mar marijuana laws. It says here this has happened before in parts of the country where, where you may not expect it. It seems to be a growing trend. It goes on, it says, um, a Kansas defense attorney recounts the turn of events in a jury trial in a level three possession. It says here, uh, my almost all-white, middle-class, middle-aged jury went into full rebellion against the prosecutor, stating that they wouldn't convict even if the client's guilt was proven beyond reasonable doubt. They felt marijuana should be legalized. He says here what he does with his own business and that the jails are already full of people for this silly charge. So it goes on here and it says one woman uh, from the back said how stupid this was and why are they even wasting their time? A suit from the front said this is the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard and the prosecutor ended up dismissing the case. So he says he's still laughing his ass off. He's never seen this full on um, mutiny by an entire ju jury pool before. And I personally think the only reason it's still illegal is because uh, drug cartels and banks and the people that fund all this and operate it like the intelligence communities for your government 
they make too much money. They make too much money off of it, and they make too much money off of uh, just local municipalities uh, for it being legal. You know, they make a lot of money off busting people for pot, you know? So, and people say, well, just legalize it and tax it. Well, and, and, and if you're gonna, if they, if they do that, they're gonna tax it a lot. Trust me, they're not gonna just allow all those profits to go lost. Russia harvest forecast cut as drought hits crop and east. This is like in 2010, they had a, uh, they had a drought and they lost a lot of wheat and they're a big exporter for the world. So it could be harp wars, who knows? Fukushima fish carrying 258 times the safe level of radiation. So that'll make you feel comfortable in the biggest seafood eating country in the world. So yeah, it says here, the pair of greenlings are contaminated with 258 times the level government deems safe for consumption. Just it says here, captured 12 miles from the nuclear plant. So we're talking about overpopulation, too many people, right? That's what the eugenicists tell us and all the rich people who have everything. You've probably seen this article from last month. It says here, Japan women lose longest lived title. So they basically lost their first place title as the world's longest lived in 2011 for the first time in more than 25 years. From August 11th, 2012, record low number of babies born in Japan. It says fewer babies were born in Japan in the last year than any other on record, pulling down its population for the third year in a row. For whatever it's worth, the Japanese are a target by these world powers. Uh, they look down on the Japanese as far as their, the elite families. They're way, way, way down at the bottom. It says here, Americans having fewer babies crimping consumer spending. So uh, social economic warfare is resulting in less births. So good for the overpopulation pushers, right? And uh, also because they're becoming sterile as well. So. They can't have babies, so they have to go to the eugenicist in a lab to get to have one. It says here, Argentinian study finds Roundup ingredient causes birth defects from August 19, 2012. So birth defects from Roundup. BPA and more lowering sperm counts across the board from August 21st. So it says low sperm counts leading to infertility are more common than people think. It says here, it's progressively been getting worse over the past 50 years. Contributing factors to a low sperm count include keeping your cell phone in your pocket, which I've warned people, consistently using a laptop in your lap, smoking, drinking, recreational drugs, hair loss medications, which is ironic because you want to be more manly and get your hair back and then you end up not being able to procreate. So that's, that's a good, that's a good uh, laugh that the eugenicists get. Um, illness, which of course is a result of chemtrails and all sorts of eugenics. Stress, which <laughs> everybody has it now. So it's like BPA, which is the bisphenol A which is in a lot of plastic. Down in Brazil, you have uh, them getting ready to unleash genetically modified mosquitoes, and it goes and it continues dangerously misguided plan to combat Dene fever. So they're doing this, they're already doing this down in Florida, and now they're actually aerial spraying for West Nile virus, because 20, 28 people died, they're gonna force uh, medicate all of the population down there in the Northeast coast, so you like that? Corporations sneak synthetic preservatives into organic food. I've covered this before. So you try to go and avoid all these pesticides, Roundup and stuff, and uh, they sneak it in there anyway. So they sneak, sneak synthetics into organic food. There's an iPhone accessory that detects whether or not food is truly organic. So yeah, you just stick like this little thing in there and um, it'll tell you the nitrate level, which I guess is uh, synonymous with uh, organic or not. Links will be posted so you can go and check that out. Next up, we have UK Food Agency report it says organic food is not healthier. So this is from August 2nd, 2012. Government saying organic food is not healthier. This is like the RBST, whatever, that you find in the dairy products in the milk, right? People want to get away from Monsanto's bullshit growth hormones because, you know, they're trying to pump out as much as they possibly can and get the profits. And it's even banned in the EU and in Canada. And Monsanto actually is the one responsible for these growth hormones. They're also responsible for the quality checks. They're the ones that actually conducted the research, kind of like the aluminum companies with fluoride. So they sued this company because they put a label on there to protect our customers who didn't want this stuff. They said, we're in the business of marketing milk, not Monsanto's drugs. Sneaky bastards. Then should women be allowed to breastfeed in public? That's this new debate. Um, and then while at the same time you have this, right? a three-year-old uh, breastfeeding in the cover of time. This is what they're pushing to demonize traditional values and then push this crazy stuff like a transgender father breastfeeding support group rules unfairly bars him from becoming a leader. That's right. So he was discriminated against. Breastfeeding man drinking wife's breast milk helps his erectile dysfunction. 
after birth abortions anybody? The eugenicists say babies are a parasitic burden on society. Thank you.